All had been arrested in Jerusalem by the Romans and protected from assassination by the Jews who opposed him because he declared the gospel of the Lord Jesus to the Gentiles and didn't require Gentiles to convert to Judaism. Having been arrested, both Felix and Fested recognised Paul had not done anything wrong, but they wanted to do the Jews a favour, and so Paul had to appeal to Caesar. As he's brought to Rome as a prisoner, the Lord honours Paul through all the circumstances and all the difficulties. The difficulties that they pass through bring glory to God through his servant. And we saw the horrendous storm that lasted 14 days that resulted in their shipwreck at Malta. But after three months, they make it to Rome. And Paul is permitted to dwell by himself with the soldier who guarded him while he waits his appearance before Caesar. It came to pass after three days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. So when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, wanted to let me go because there was no cause for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar. Not that I had anything of which to accuse my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have called for you, to see you, and to speak with you. Because of the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. Then they said to him, We neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think, for concerning this sect we know that it is spoken against everywhere. So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets, from morning till evening. And some were persuaded by the things that were spoken, and some disbelieved. So, when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts, and turn, so that I should heal them. Therefore let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concerned the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we see the conclusion of the Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 28, verses 17 to 31. It's incredible the standing Paul has among the Jews. So he is able to call the leaders of the Jews together in Rome, and they come, and they have no prejudice against him. They recognise his knowledge and learning and understanding of the Scriptures, his position as a Pharisee trained under Gamaliel in the strictest fashion of the Jewish religion and they're interested to hear how he explains and justifies what is known as the sect, those who follow Jesus. It's a division of Judaism which has received a lot of criticism and they're wanting to understand what it is all about. And Paul presents it to them, teaching them 
from the writings of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, the promises that God made to Adam and Eve, to Noah, to Abraham in particular, and to the nation of Israel, that they should be the means by which all the earth is blessed. Then explaining the hardness of heart of the Jews by reference to Isaiah's prophecy, when the Lord called Isaiah to be a preacher to the nation of Israel, Isaiah volunteered, and the Lord told him the people would not hear, they would not understand. Their hearts would be dull, their ears deaf, their eyes closed. They would refuse to receive the message by which the Lord would save them. But Paul extends this then to say, well, God's message of salvation is not just for the Jews. It has been sent also to the Gentiles, which the Old Testament also predicts, that the Messiah of Israel is so great that not only will he rule Israel, but he will be the prince of the whole world. And so the Jews depart to debate these things among themselves some believing and some not believing. And many of them coming back at various occasions to discuss these things and understand these things better with Paul. He's in his own rented house. He's not at liberty to go anywhere. Anyone who wants must come to him. That is where we all stand. We must seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. When John the Baptist was here, Those who wanted to hear the message of the Lord had to go out into the wilderness and find him there. Those who came to hear the Lord Jesus, they found him either in the synagogue or out in the deserted places. He didn't raise a ruckus in the streets. And so those who would seek to know the will of God in Paul's day came to him where he was in his own rented house. And he received them all. He received everyone who came to him. He was a gracious host and his purpose was to explain the kingdom of God and teaching the things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke wrote the book of Acts as well as the Gospel of Luke. After careful research, Luke accompanied Paul to Rome on this final journey and so evidently completed this book at the end of two years in Rome. Most of Paul's epistles were written by this time, although some were not. Philippians evidently written in a later imprisonment, as was Second Timothy. But most of the others can be fitted into the story that Luke has told. Other records suggest that Paul was released from prison, that he and that he did take more missionary journeys, but was eventually rearrested and was executed in the time of Nero. He had desired to go to Spain, but we don't know whether he made it there. The New Testament contains 14 books attributed to Paul, although the last one, Hebrews, is not internally attributed to him. That set of 14 begins with Romans, which Paul wrote in anticipation of coming to Rome, and ends with the epistle to Hebrews, which sets forth the teaching he gave to the Jewish leaders when they came to him as reported in Acts 28. Not putting his name to it, possibly because of the bad press he received from the Jews who rejected the message of the Messiah, setting out in there very carefully the basis for the gospel as he taught it from the Old Testament, that salvation is by grace through faith that God will establish the kingdom and that Jesus is the Messiah, the Lord of that kingdom. God spoke in times past by the prophets, but has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, 